Today I want to share something new with you, but yet it's something old. New in the sense that it's something that has spoken to my heart in a fresh way. Old in that it's not new. It's a principle that we find all the way through the Word of God. And it comes from Job chapters 1 and 2, uh, and our reading additionally Acts chapter 6 and 7. But it's in chapter 1 and chapter 2 with a couple of verses tied together that I, that I find something new and something old. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. That's chapter 1, verse 20. And in verse uh, chapter 2, verse 10, the last part of this, it says, In all of this, Job did not sin with his lips. Now, it's a, it's kind of a difficult passage to, to sort out, uh, not because it's ununderstandable, but because it works out hard. The statement is very clear but the working out of it is what is hard. Uh, we have here a picture of how God moves and how God works in our lives. It's, it's not always easy, uh, but there is purpose in it all. And that understanding is what gives us the strength, the ability to carry on. We can't see behind the scenes. So when adversity comes, it is difficult to do what Job did. He worshiped. Worship is a key when adversity comes. Even as I talk about that, as I say that, I realize that there there will be adverse things come, difficulty that will come. Was Job in pain and difficulty? Most certainly. However, when it came, though he was grieved, he still worshiped the Lord in the midst of his adversity. That speaks powerfully to his own relationship with the Lord, to worship in the midst of a trial. Uh, it, it, it speaks volumes as to why Satan wanted to tear him down, why he wants to tear any one of us down because, because of the change that has transpired, because of the, of the relationship that we have with the Lord. He wants to tear that down because he wants to destroy all of God's work. Anyway, what he wants to do is not the most important thing. What God wants to do is what's important. So Job's whole life was one that radiated the, the glory of God and did so even more when it was all said and done. So it just speaks powerfully to me right now. Uh, you know, when I started reading the, the book of Job, uh, it, it hasn't always been one of my favorite books, but I asked the Lord to speak to me out of it, and God was faithful to do that. So here in this passage, it really hits home right where I'm currently living. And so what, what do we do in the midst of trial, in the midst of adversity? When when um, when our bodies hurt, when uh, sickness or disease or whatever comes, what do we do in the midst of that? Well, we ask the Lord for healing for sure, and and I and I do that. But God has a plan and a purpose that maybe I don't understand, and so in the midst of that, I worship Him. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians, in everything or for everything, give thanks. In the, in First in First Thessalonians, he says. Uh, uh, and in everything, give thanks. For and in, two important little words, five letters. So do we say, oh, I just am so thankful for this pain. It's just so wonderful. No, no. We thank him because we know that he's working, that he's doing something. Even though we may not see it, we still worship him. We give him praise and honor and glory because he's God. And he has a plan and a purpose that he is working out in us. That he would even pay attention to us long enough to do that is wonderful beyond our ability to put our heads around it. So in that and for, because we know that he is working something out. Well, we can quote Romans 8, 28 all day long. Uh, and we know that all things work together for good of those who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. So is he working good through that? Absolutely. Do we pray for healing? Of course we do, because we're told to do that. James says that if any sick among you, call for the elders of the church, anoint with oil, lay hands upon, pray of faith, save the sick. Save the sick. So yeah, we do pray for that, but we also trust in the midst of that that God has a plan and a purpose in what He's doing in our life. Job is a great example of that. So I pray that as we take time the next few days, if you're following along in the reading that I'm doing. Look at the life of Job and see what God will speak to us this, in those in those passages. Amen. Well, I pray the Lord will bless you today. Pray it's been a help to you. Pray that you'll be able to lift up lift up the hands that hang down and strengthen the feeble knees as 
uh, the Hebrew writer says in chapter 12. May the Lord richly bless you today.